This is AntiTube. This video is about the hand wheel system on a Singer model 1591. Now the documentation for for this model, they call it the balance wheel and and uh, over the years it's been called balance wheel and hand wheel. So I'm going to call it the hand wheel. <laughs> okay? <laughs> and uh I'm going to, in the video, I'm going to be taking, taking it off the machine, uh, showing you quickly how to put it back on properly, and then when I have it off, I'm going to disassemble it and show you all the parts inside, and uh, I'm going to clean them and then reassemble it and, you know, put it back on the machine. This, this one's uh, pretty dirty, and... Uh, I haven't disassembled the hand wheel in a number of years. I usually don't find it that necessary, but I realized I'd never done a video of taking the, the parts, the gear and the, uh, the spring. You know, there's a shock absorbing spring in there. If you've ever turned the hand wheel a little and you feel it springy and you, you let it go and it bounces back or springs back. Um, that's uh, due to a shock absorbing spring in there and I'm going to show you that because that spring can break or come off the the pin that holds it you know so that's that's what this is going to be about now I have the motor housing and bobbin winder off of here so that's why it's looking different than your 1591 okay I have the potted motor off and stuff but uh, here, here we go. We start by taking off this clamping screw, and it, it, it is a screw. And to get it off, we have to loosen the clamp screw stops stop screw. That's this little little screw in there. Now, you loosen it about halfway, like that is usually enough, and you can remove it if you want. I'll be removing it to cleaning it, but then hold the hand wheel and uh, I got some grease on there from touching the back and then this is a, this is a screw, right? So you're going to unscrew it. Lefty Lucy. And it's, it's uh, heavier than you think because it's just solid steel with chrome plating, so be careful, okay? There's the stops. Uh, the, the clamp screw and the stop screw that's in it. Okay. So what's what's left in here now is mm, a stop motion clamp washer. And sometimes that'll fall right off when when you take off that clamp screw. This time it stayed in here, so I'm just gonna pull it off. Show it to you. Okay. So you see these two little ears, let me get a pointer here, there's two little ears on the inside that fit into slots on the arm shaft counterbalance here, and that's that's counterbalance that's screwed onto the arm shaft, that's actually what you, you screw the clamp screw into, screws into there, okay? And then on here, there's three little raised studs. And the purpose of those is when you t put the machine in bobbin winding mode or stop the motion of the needle bar and the feed dog, and you hold the hand wheel and turn that left until it stops, it's stopping because the end of that screw is hitting one of these little studs. Okay? Now, if you have a different model 15, like the, like the 1588 or 89 or 90, uh, I think instead of these little uh, studs, um, you, you have lugs on the outside. You have these little little square pieces of steel that stick right off the edge, but it's the same principle on those. The the stop screw would hit 
one of those lugs. Okay. There's the back side. Okay. Let me take this back off. Now, once you're at this point, you can just pull the hand wheel off. Okay. And when when it's in here with the motor, the the gear of the hand wheel meshes with a a, a gear on the uh, shaft of the motor so you don't you just want to be a little bit careful and wiggle it and uh, pull it pull it off Whew, this is real heavy okay so that's what we're looking like here there's the counterbalance that it sits on screwed to the arm shaft okay when you reassemble it you push that on and gently mesh it in with the gear on the motor you take your uh, stop motion clamp washer with the studs out facing you and you stick it the, the, the little ears or tabs in the slot now we're going to put this screw on and you have a 50-50 chance of getting this in the right spot so that the stop screw can hit one of the studs and if you put it on and it doesn't work right then you just take the clamp screw off and turn your stop motion clamp washer 180 degrees so let's just try this we'll screw it all the way on We'll tighten up the stop screw and then we'll test it, okay? So, to go into bobbin winding mode or stop motion mode, you, you hold the hand wheel and you turn that knob. And you see how it's, it's going here about an eighth of a turn and it stops? Yay! So we did this right. I mean, I got, I got lucky that's exactly what you want and and we want it to stop because otherwise if you just loosened it and we're running this to you know to wind your bobbin your whole screw could could unscrew and just come flying off or fall off so that's why they stop it you loosen it enough to take pressure off that clamp so the needle bar and feed dog don't move anymore and you can use the bobbin winder okay so, I know some of you have seen me do that in several videos, but I always have new visitors to my channel, and maybe they came here specifically for that kind of information. So, on the timeline of my videos, they have little chapters. I have chapters marked. So, if I'm doing something in the video that you already know or don't care to see, you can go down on that uh, timeline and look at the different chapters and just click on them and move ahead. Now, when you go to take this off, sometimes this washer <laughs> falls off. <laughs> but what I wanted to say is sometimes it can be stuck on there. If there was ever oil or grease in there that dried up. And if it seems like it doesn't want to come loose, it's okay. Just just leave it on there while you pull off the hand wheel okay and then you can work on getting it loose okay so that is a, how to take it off and put it on to the machine I'm gonna move the machine out of the way and then I'm going to show you the hand wheel pardon my dirty old oil cloth but I've got a dirty old <laughs> Uh, a dirty old hand wheel to show you here okay yeah it's got quite a bit of heavy grease in here see that that's why I want to disassemble it and take it all off so I'm going to 
wipe off some of this excess grease with q-tips and a rag and then I will glove up and I'll show you how to disassemble all these parts and what they are and so forth okay okay I guess I'll barehanded here <laughs> but uh, this some of this grease can be pretty pretty sticky and dirty so feel free to wear your favorite glove if you want to start dismantling the parts of this the first thing I'm going to do is remove this gear collar okay that's this silver ring uh, that slips onto the the gear hub that's the, the, the strong steel center part here that goes through it and uh, it's held in place by three screws here okay so that's what we want to do is loosen or remove those screws if if you can remove them if you want uh, but we got to get it loose and then it's just going to slip up and off of the gear hub okay so this is what holds the gear in place on the gear hub makes sense right okay I know this is kind of there we go it's kind of oily and greasy in here uh, which surprises me but um, let's take a look here and get this off when you're using your screwdriver here around this textile like gear just be careful okay whoops one of my screws came right out here we go it's a close tolerance there we go so I'm going to put my screw back in here right now so it doesn't wander off. Let's put those back in a little bit. Okay. Then we see our text to light gear, right? So we'll go ahead and wiggle that off right up you obviously see this one is dark in color it's brown and it uh, can be like this I've also seen them a much lighter beige looking color okay now there's a pin through the gear that that goes into a, a hole in the spring <laughs> but there's a spring retainer washer here that came off with the gear usually and yeah see that grease in there boy i don't know um usually this washer is uh, stuck onto the hub and on the base here but if it comes off like this it's okay it should just slip off but it's kind of feels kind of glued to the to the gear with grease I guess I should have put my gloves on huh <laughs> okay let me put that back kind of where it's uh, supposed to be okay like right about there mm-hmm And there's the Textilite gear, and there's the steel pin that's in it. Okay. Hmm. Now we'll take off the, the spring washer. I think that's all they call it, it's just the spring washer. The spring retaining washer. Nice steel washer with a hole and a cutout in it. This is all greasy and oily too. <laughs> okay. And we're getting down here now where you see more of the hub. 
got it all packed with grease and stuff in here too. And there is the shock absorbing spring down in there. So we'll see if we can lift that out. Should just come right off. One of the loops of the spring is on a pin. I want to show you these three pins here. Hmm. Stuck in there pretty good. See if I can slip it off the pin maybe is best. There we go. Oop. Hey. So it looks, it kind of looks around when you're looking down on it, but it's a, it's a flat spring. Okay. And it's got uh, lots of strength, and it's, and it's coiled over to make two loops or holes. Okay. And then let me show you the last part of this that I want to be sure that you see. If you get in here, you should see three steel pins here on the base of the hub okay and and uh, those are to hold the spring and also to to uh, help keep the ends separated so you don't get a jarring motion okay so that's what we've got we've got our uh, Oh, I, I never knew these came out. Look at that. When I turned it upside down, the pin just slipped right out. I figured they were screwed in or set in at the factory. Can you, can you see that? How about that? Okay. I'm finding all kinds of new little things out with this Model 15. So I'm, I'm glad I opened this up. I wonder if the other one will just lift right out. Nope. <laughs> How about this one over here? <laughs> this one does. Okay. Pin number two. So what's up with this guy? This is the middle pin and this is what the... Oh boy, that's in there. Yeah, I'm not going to force that. Maybe that one doesn't want to come out. I can see the large holes here where the other pins went into. But this one doesn't seem to, to have that. Let's see if I can make it clean off some of this grease. This one doesn't have the outline of a large hole. And this is the pin you'll see later that that the spring hooks onto around that pin and the spring retaining washer that hole in the washer slips on over there so that one's permanent and these other two came out I'm glad I found that out now not while I had it in the sink cleaning it and <laughs> watch it go down the drain or something Ooh. okay so I've got the hand wheel with three pins, one permanent, two removable, right? I've got the spring, the shock absorbing spring. I've got the spring retaining washer, texture light gear, and the gear retaining washer. And looks like one more screw fell out of that. I better get it back in there. So those are the parts of the, of the hand wheel itself. Okay, and of course you already saw me take off the uh, stop motion clamp washer before. And the clamping screw with the clamping screw stop screw in it. Okay, so I'm going to clean these all up. I'm probably going to use crud cutter. Um, I've used crud cutter on Texalite gears before you don't want to soak the gear in that but uh, I'm hesitant I don't have much experience cleaning the black finish 
So I don't know if I'll use crud cutter on that or just some good old uh, dish soap. But uh, I'll get these cleaned up and I'll show you how it goes back together properly. Okay, I have them clean. I have the parts clean now and looked them over. They all look uh, great. They're, of course, none of them are damaged or anything like that. Um, the text to light gear cleaned up good. I, w I have to say that this black, uh, dark brown, blackish grease that was all over this was some of the nastiest grease I have ever encountered in a machine. <laughs> it's... <laughs> It's like axle grease or wheel bearing grease or something. It was uh, slimy and difficult to to remove, but it's all gone now. So uh, happy for that, and I can go ahead with my assembly. Um, I did uh, take the screws out of the retaining washer, the gear retention washer, and. Uh, before I put the screws back in, I, I put a little oil on this uh, interdental brush here and uh, brush some oil inside these so I can get these little set screws back in there. And I read up some more about these uh, three pins that are on the hub of the hand wheel. And uh, I was surprised, I, you know, you saw when those two pins came out, they just pulled right out. But the third one is different. It it's, doesn't come out. It's set in there. Uh, here's the, what I call, I guess, the third pin. It's the center pin right there. And... Uh, I'm thinking of it as an anchor pin uh, because uh, this one loop of the spring goes in there, goes over that pin to hold it. So let me put these two pins. If you notice, the little pin sticks up out of a cylinder, but they're not centered. The pins are not centered into that cylinder they're a little off center and i realize these pens have to to flex a little bit um, as the mm, spring uh, compresses and stuff so that started to make a little bit of sense to me so you want to be sure that uh, those two pins are in there and haven't been lost because their purpose is to keep the two ends of the spring from hitting each other. So the, the, the spring is going to flex to do that kind of shock absorbing for the hand wheel, but the pins will stop them from being able to hit each other, which of course would be noisy if that happened every revolution of the you know every time you started or stop the the hand wheel you could be hearing that knock 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 so i understand those pin systems better now when i put this spring back on then the right hole or the right loop is going to go over that center anchoring pin okay so now we see how this spring fits nice and flat in here and it gets anchored. Okay. Then we're going to have the spring retaining uh, washer go in here. And this hole, the round hole, is going to go on that same anchoring pin, the same center pin. So we'll be sure our spring is seated in there properly. Now you see this loop is the mm, movement area that the gear can rock back and forth on the spring. So as you're as you're looking at it, you know, we're we're backwards on the on the hand wheel. 
And as you're looking at it like this, this loop is going to go to the left of the center pin. And I'll show you why in a moment. Now this is a very, this was a very tight fit coming off. <laughs> Let's see if I can put it on nice and level. Okay, now I want to be sure that I am on that center pin. See, it looks, it doesn't, it seems like it doesn't want to quite sit there. I have to be sure that doesn't shift off and move. Now what, what this does now, by putting this oval cut out, you see the left loop of the spring right here okay and when we put the gear on now the pin on the back side of the gear has to go into that left loop of the spring And I think I'm in there. You see how this works now? See that springy motion? Okay. That's the shock absorbing spring. And that's why I was talking about when this is mounted on the machine. If you, if you kind of turn the hand wheel, it moves a little bit uh, before it starts rotating the arm shaft. But if you let the hand wheel go, it'll snap back from that spring. If you don't have that little springy motion on your hand wheel, then your spring is missing or broken. And you might be having a lot of noise from that area. All right. This is looking great. Now we're going to do is put on the, the gear retaining washer. And I'm... Didn't pay much attention when I took it off. <laughs> Oops. Because <laughs> it looked to me at first glance that it wouldn't matter. Does it go on like this or does it go on like that? And I'm looking, there's a very slight beveled edge on this side. And I guess I guess there's a there's a beveled edge here too. Now that I look a little closer. So I don't think that it's going to make any difference. And there's no special place the screws line up. So just put it on however you want to. And then I want to be sure and it's compacted down and level before I tighten it up. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten it. And I'm just going to turn the screw and until the screw hits that uh, base in here. Not really going to bear down on it at all. The tolerance is close, but it's kind of like putting a, 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 a wheel on your car. You know, you ever hear that? You got five or six lug nuts and they, they tell you tighten this one down a little bit, then go over here, then go over here. And that makes it even so I'm always done that with like gears on the machine that you put on a shaft so in this case I've got three of these little set screws I just want to uh, sorry it's in the shadow there for me I just want to snug them all up just till they touch mm -hmm. Make sure I still got my, yeah, now I'm not going to smash this down because you have to have the, you know, you don't want to bind up the gear, right, in the spring. But I want it completely on a flat. As a matter of fact, that one I tightened a little bit more. Just let me nudge that back a little and... Make sure I'm getting my springy action. Okay. 
Since this was the third spring then, I'm going to go ahead and just do that little extra half turn or so to get it uh, completely tight. I don't want any of this to get loose and be flopping around in there. That's it. Look at that. See how easy that is? You don't need any special tools or anything. Just a screwdriver, right? <laughs> okay, that away. And uh, I guess that's that's it for you. I, I showed you earlier how to put it on. I'm going to do it again because some people might have missed it. And I know you just love to see me do it, right? <laughs> See, look at that guy trying to get that clamp washer to go on there. <laughs> okay. All right. So, again, I would pre-grease it, but then I'm going to... Uh, I always put a drop of oil on this uh, shaft right here. Because when you run in bobbin winding mode the hand wheel spins on this. It doesn't turn with the shaft because you have the clamp loosened. So I'm just going to put a little bit of oil in there. And I'll take the residue and I'll wipe it in here. A long time ago when I first started doing this on one of the machines I really loaded this up with oil. <laughs> and when I was trying to use the bobbin winder mode the the needle bar kept creeping it kept you know slowly moving up and down and it took me the longest time to figure i put so much oil on here it was hydroplaning even though i had the machine in bobbin winding mode so i took it back apart and wiped up the excess grease and then it worked great <laughs> okay so I've got that on there. Then I'm going to take my uh, clamping washer and I'll just pick a pick a spot. Maybe that will work. Then I'll start my set screw in there. The back part of the set screw has threads, but the tip doesn't have any threading. And that's so that it, when it hits that um, pin or nub on the washer, that's what it hits when it stops. So I'll just get it started in here. Okay. And I'll just put a drop on those threads. I always do that with this uh, Tri-Flow uh, Superior Lubricant because even if it dries it's going to leave a little residue of that PTFE. Hmm. And I'll put my screw back on there. I'm getting pretty good at this now. <laughs> and then I will tighten the stop screw and stop set screw all the way. Now I'll see if it, there, boom, it clamps. And then to release it, it stops. So that's hitting one of those little posts there. So that's it, guys. That's all the parts of the hand wheel system. And what, what to look for if you're having problems or how to do it if you want to clean it. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen inside the hand wheel parts like that? I've never done that video before. So, there you go. Take care. Thanks for tuning in. And I hope that you'll come back uh, and see some more of my playlist or series for my Ike, my Singer Model 1591. Thank you.